Charles Moore, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, your first time at the festival. What are your first impressions? Well, it's like the field of the cloth of gold when you come up at the top of the hill and you look down on the valley or some great uh, bivouac where a war is about to take place, but very beautiful, very dramatic. And a lovely audience, very friendly and sort of well-informed and wanting to hear it, which is always nice. Mm. Um, obviously, I suppose you'd be doing a, a endless sort of publicity for this sort of book. How does this relate to other events that you've been doing? I mean, well, this is one of the best, I think, because it's such a nice venue, um, and also because it's history. So um, sometimes festivals are a bit miscellaneous, which can be interesting. But you occasionally might feel that you're not quite getting the audience that. Um, it can be harder to speak to some audiences because it's there's, there's slightly too disparate in their interests. Mm. Um, and this is people who don't have, they don't have to be Thatcher experts, of course, but they're interested in history. And that's, of course, wonderful because this is work of history. It's not a work of politics. Mm. When you were chosen as the official biographer, did you ever, well, firstly, did you ever contemplate declining the offer? Um, and secondly, did you ever worry that the burden, you know, the weight of the burden or what have you, would, would be too much? Uh, well, to the... I did contemplate declining um, because of the potential burden. That would be the only reason. Right, yeah. I was editing the Daily Telegraph at the time and there was no way I could do the book properly and edit the Telegraph. Uh, but of course it was a great opportunity and a great honour to be asked to do it. Sure. And so what I did was ag I agreed, um, but I didn't immediately do most of the work. I only did that after I left the Daily Telegraph, which was about six years after I was given yeah. the offer. Um, and I continued to work for the Telegraph, but only as a writer, so as I could, rather than executive, so then I could get on with the book. Make progress. Um, you mentioned that you uh, editor of Daily Telegraph, Sunday Telegraph, Spectator. Did you find it difficult making that transfer from writing sort of journalism, uh, from journalism to biography? Uh, well, it's difficult being alone um, <laughs> after years in an office. Mm. Uh, I wanted to do that really anyway because I edited one way and another for nearly 20 years and uh, that's enough. Mm. And um, so I did want to get on with writing, but the, the act of writing a book is more lonely than writing journalism. Mm. And I'm privileged enough to be able to do both, which is great because it sort of varies the pace and actually the things you find out from one uh, help with the other. Mm. Um, but there's no doubt, you know, if you're thinking of writing a book but you're not quite sure about whether to write one or not, my advice would be don't, because you, you must be sure that you but, want to do it. Otherwise, you will be very, very miserable. And even if you do um, seriously want to, you'll still be quite miserable some of the time because yeah. it's, such a, it's such a burden and it's very difficult. What do you attribute to her success, the 11 years, the 11 and a half years she spent, the three terms? What do you think is her secret, her secrets? Well, if it's one thing above all, even more than conviction, which is obviously very important, I would say it was will. Mm. It was the absolute determination and desire to do it. Mm. Um, never giving up um, and never settling for second best. Mm. So the con she would always say she's a conviction politician, completely true, but it's not the whole truth. It's also some absolutely overriding determination to do it and to win. Are you surprised or, or disappointed or um, did you expect the sort of hmm. negative, some of the sort of negative publicity and yeah. reaction that has come? From oh, I certainly expected negativity um, hmm. uh, and she's a controversial figure and she wouldn't have objected to controversy. What I was disappointed about was that I thought the, so what you might call the nasty negatives as opposed to the reasonable critics mm. were exaggerated you know these are not many people um, and they got given too big a showing by the BBC um, there are all sorts of criticisms you can make of Mrs Thatcher but you know she's a big figure and she deserves to be treated in that sense with respect regardless of what your opinion is and I thought there was an element of disrespect which misrepresented the country mm. and when we had the funeral it was clear that it misrepresented the country because it was a great funeral and it was a very well attended and very respectful um, and uh, admiring uh, occasion, and uh, you know, so I think in the end, as often happens in this country, sort of there's a bit of nastiness uh, starts, and then in the end, it all comes right. And you probably approach this as a supporter of of of, uh, of, of Margaret. Well, I, I certainly um, admire Mrs. Thatcher, um, and I think she's a really interesting person, and I also have a sympathy for her. Um, 
what you might call her struggle, because it's to do with her coming from nowhere, being the only woman, the loneliness of it. She herself was um, very reticent about talking about herself and her private life, though the thing she did say was sometimes very funny and interesting. <laughs> um, the biggest breakthrough in the book was all these letters that her, she wrote to her sister when she was a young woman, which nobody else had seen, which simply told you absolutely masses that nobody had ever about her ambitions and her exams and getting to Oxford and falling in love and becoming a candidate and getting married and having children and getting into Parliament. Just marvellous. So for you, what would you say is the most important quote uh, that Mrs Thatcher ever said, in your opinion? I know it's a big question, but... It's not exactly a phrase, but it's a brilliant, brilliant moment, which is the day she decided to resign. She was in the House of Commons and she, everyone knew she had, was resigning. And um, somebody attacks her about how the gap between the rich and poor has uh, been um, increased in her time. Mm -hmm. And she does a marvellous thing. It's not, she, not, she speaks, but what she does is she um, uses her fingers and she says, he doesn't care about... Um, prosperity he only cares about the gap and what I care about is that everybody's rising and I, it's not very important to me whether the gap's big so long as the bottom bit is rising mm. and she and she does this marvelous thing with her fingers and she says what he wants is for it to go down 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 as long as they're close together <laughs> okay, and what yeah. I want is all to go up and I don't mind you see what I mean yeah yeah that, that's a brilliant she's very good at sort of illustrating her point mm. Well, Charles Moore, thank you so much for your time thank this you. evening and uh, I wish you every, every luck with the book. Thanks thank you very much. much.